Hello, pre-algebra. This is chapter four, section two, where we're going to talk about uh, simplifying algebraic expressions. So hold on to your hat. We're going to move quickly. Feel free to stop and rewind at any point. An algebraic expression consists of sums and or products of numbers and variables. Sums means they're adding or subtracting, and or products mean they're multiplying or dividing of numbers and variables. Remember, the whole thing that makes it algebra is when there is a variable involved, okay? It's just like regular old math, except sometimes we do not know what got added to two. So we use a variable. An expression does not contain an equal sign. If there's an equal sign, it becomes an equation. So we only are talking about expressions. So for example, 3x is an expression with one term. 2a plus 5 is an expression with two terms. We can even have division like 2ab over 3 as an expression. These are all algebraic expressions because of the variables. In the algebraic expression 40d, the letter d is called, you should know this, the variable. And variables are always letters that re represent a value. A value that we do not know and also a value that can change or vary, right? That's what the word variable, it comes from the word vary. So it represents a value that could change. The coefficient is the number multiplied by the variable. So in the expression 4x, 4 is the coefficient. In the number that we had up above, 2ab over 3, 2 thirds is the coefficient. 2 thirds is a number, don't forget. It's just a fraction. It's a rational number. I hope we know about rational numbers at this point. In the algebraic expression c plus 3, 3 here is called a constant. It does not vary. It does not change. 3 will always stay 3, so that makes it a constant. The next word might be a new word. It's called a monomial, and mono means 1. A monomial is a number, or it could be a variable, or it could be the product of a number and variable. Okay? But it's just going to be one term. For example, 6 is a constant and it is a monomial. x is a constant, I mean, excuse me, is a variable. x is a variable. And if you just have x, that's a monomial. 3 times y, well, there's a, a coefficient and a variable. And because they're being multiplied, that makes them a monomial. The opposite of a monomial, <clears throat> or a, another type of nomial would be a binomial or a trinomial. And just so that I'm clear, a binomial would be two terms. For example, if we put x plus 3y, that makes it binomial. It has two terms, and the word bi means two. And then there is something called a trinomial, where if I added all three of them together, I would have three terms making it a trinomial, okay? So those are coming up more in Algebra 1. Just wanted you to know those words if you hear them again. But right now we just want to concentrate on a monomial. If I refer to a monomial, I'm talking about just the one, <clears throat> the one term. Okay, we had an exercise early in the year about all the words that would mean add. So let's run through some that you're going to hear a lot when you're trying to write an algebraic expression from words. Okay, n plus 6 is an obvious add. The sum of n and 6, so the word and means sum, which means add. 6 added to n, n increased by 6. 
uh, six more than n. All of those are telling us to add, to subtract n minus six. The difference between n and six, six subtracted from n, that's a t, uh, six less than n, uh, n decreased by six and n less six. Now real quick, let's remember what we know about the word than. When you hear the word than, whatever comes after than goes first. So you write six less than n like this, but n less six is written the same way. n less six and six less than n. So be careful. Always listen for the word then and remember that that means to, uh, to flip-flop them. <clears throat> All right, multiply. Here are some words that in, indicate multiplication. N, of course, times 6. The product of N and 6. And 6 multiplied by N. For division, of course, if they spell it out for us and tell us it's divided by 6, sometimes you hear the word quotient, the quotient of n and 6. 6 equals shares of n would be n divided by 6. Um, and then 6 divided into n. Six is doing the dividing. Six divided into n. All of these mean n divided by six. <clears throat> okay? Words that indicate parentheses. Okay, when do I need to put parentheses? I have uh, given you a hint to always hug your variables with parentheses, but when you listen to the words and you hear the word sum or difference or product, or quotient. Let me uh, ask you to copy down these two examples, <clears throat> or if you don't copy them down, at least listen very closely as I read these words. Twice the quotient of z and 19. Now who's the quotient? z and 19. What's happening to that quotient? It's being doubled. Twice the quotient. So see how the word quotient here indicated that 2 is not only multiplied times z, it's multiplied times the, the division of z and 19. So twice the quotient of z and 19. Let's read this one. 6 times the difference of a number and 10. Now I don't know the number, a number, so we need to give it a variable, assign it a variable. I love x, so let's call it x. 6 times what? Not just times x, but times the difference of x and 10. So do you hear how that difference, it's 6 times the difference. You've got to multiply 6 times the, uh, the result of that subtraction problem. All right, I'm going to leave this example problem. This is a real life example problem about going to a concession stand and looking at the cost of the items. And first I want you just to write an expression uh, using H for hot dog, B for hamburger, and S for soft drinks. Then I'm going to tell you how many of each I want you to buy. So I want you to see how algebra is used in everyday life. Give me your best effort, the best angle. You know it. It's the triangle. So try this problem. We'll talk about it in class tomorrow. When you turn over to the back where it talks about combining like terms, there are many uh, words that I've already filled in here that are review. A term is an expression that is separated uh, by plus or minus signs. So in this example, there are three terms. It's called, by the way, a trinomial. But I'm not going to emphasize that word uh, till algebra class. Like terms can be grouped together because they have the same variable raised to the same power. To the same power. That is most important for you to realize. So in this example, 2a plus 5a, they're the same power, so I can add those together. If uh, there are constants in your terms, then the constants are always going to be like terms. So 3 and 5, 
since they do not have a variable, they're called constants. They're like terms, so you can combine those to make eight. Unlike terms remain separated. So here, they're separated. The 2a and the 8 are separated because they're not like terms. So I'm going to give you some problems to practice. Uh, I want to look at two of them with you. Let's look at number two first. We have 7y, negative 3y, and a positive y. So if I rewrite this problem, putting my like terms together, and then the constant 8 and negative 1 need to be lumped together. So now I say 7 minus 3, 7y take away 3y is 4y, plus y, and then 8 take away 1 is 7. And 4y and y make 5y plus 7. So that's how that problem is simplified. And then look at number 5, 3m, 9n, negative 2. That one is already simplified, so you can just write the word simplified. And my joke for today uh, is this. If 2 is company and 3 is a crowd, what is 4 and 5? I'm going to leave you with that riddle and see if you know the answer uh, tomorrow. All right, thank you and have a great day.